for joining the program today. I believe, God, that you are going to be greatly blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I'm your regular host on the program. The Mirror of the World is a program where we read a chapter of the Bible and then we pray for those who are sick and we give someone the opportunity to say yes to Jesus, to receive eternal life. I trust God as, as we look into his word today, the Lord will show you something that will encourage you, that will inspire faith in you, in Jesus' name. Um, I like to say this about the mirror of the world, you know, because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, if we read the Amplified Version, that God's word is like a mirror, and every time we look into it, we see the glory of the Lord. You know, I like to put it this way. We see the image that God wants us to become when we read his word. So, for example, um, the, if you are someone, you know, you've got a problem with anger, and then you read the word of the Lord that says that you should not be angry. Uh, what you then do is that you keep talking about that word, you keep thinking about that word, and as you do, the Holy Spirit will help you, and you will move from the place, you know, where you are. You easily get angry to where nothing moves you again. Because the power of God is at work in your life. If you are sick and you read the word of the Lord that says that by stripe you are healed. As you talk about that word, as you say it over and over again, the Holy Spirit will transform you into what you see in the word of God and what you are saying with your mouth. So that's the reason why we're doing the program. So we are reading the Bible for ourselves. We read the Bible so we can find what God wants us to become. Uh, we're not reading the Bible because we want to tell someone that um, uh, you need to pay attention to this. We're reading it so that we can be transformed into what the Lord will show us in his word. Um, we've been reading the book of Jonah and uh, we're reading the last chapter today. Um, I want to encourage you to please go on our YouTube channel. You see all the videos that we've done in the time past. Subscribe to our, uh, our channel on YouTube so that every time we upload new video, uh, you will be able to receive an alert. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to be reading uh, Jonah chapter 4. In chapter 3, uh, we saw how um, Jonah, how he preached. You know, uh, we were told that he went to the center of the town and we say it's important for us to go out and talk to someone about Jesus, that there's no way they will hear the good news except someone goes out to preach. It's good for you to say, oh, I need to show them at my place of work the, by the way I live. No, <laughs> that's good, you know, but you need to talk to someone. You need to say, more importantly, not just at your place of work, uh, go to the center of the town, you know, you know, the town center in your area where you live. Go to the center of the town. Uh, but I don't know what to say. You just get some tracts. If you need some tracts, we can send some to you and hand it out to people. And as you do, the Lord will lead you to someone who is ready to be saved. And uh, one thing we said, which was really key, was the fact that you're not the one doing the conversion. It is the Holy Spirit that will do the conviction and the conversion. Yours is just to preach because the angels are not allowed to preach. So uh, let's be people who share the good news unto people and let's watch and see what the Lord will do, um, just like he did with regards to the city of Nineveh. So now today, I want us to read the last chapter, and I trust that God is going to show us something in his word today. In Jesus' name. So I want to invite you to join me. Uh, can you please open your Bible either on your phone, on your tablet, or if you've got the paper copy, I want to, you to open to Jonah chapter 4. I will be reading from the easy to read translation of the Bible. Jonah was not happy that God saved the city. Jonah became angry. He complained to the Lord and said, Lord, I knew, this will, I knew this will happen. I was in my own country. And you told me to come here. At that time, I knew that you will forgive the people of this evil city. So I decided to run away to Tashi. I knew you are a kind God. I knew 
that you show mercy and don't want to punish people. I knew that you are kind, and if these people stop sinning, it will change your plans to destroy them. So now, Lord, just kill me. It's better for me to die than to live. Mm. Then the Lord said, Do you think it is right for you to be angry? Jonah went out of the city to a place near the city on the east side. He made a shelter for himself and sat there in the shade waiting to see what will happen to the city. Wow. The Lord made a God plant grow quickly over Jonah. This made a cool place for Jonah to sit and helped him to be more comfortable. He was very happy because of this plant. The next morning, God sent a worm to eat part of the plant. The worm began eating the plant and the plant died. After the sun was high in the sky, God caused a hot east wind to blow. The sun became very hot on Jonah's head and he became very weak. He asked God to let him die. He, he said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you think it is right for you to be angry just because this plant died? Jonah answered, yes, it is right for me to be angry. I'm angry enough to die. <laughs> and the Lord said, you did nothing for that plant. You did not make it grow. It grew up in the night and the next day it died and now you are sad about it if you can get upset over a plan surely i can feel sorry for a big city like nineveh there are many people and animals in that city there are more than 120,000 people who did not know they were doing wrong wow how uh, can we see that you know um that's really key most times uh we we think that people know um, that what they are doing is wrong. You know, uh, one of the things I found out with um, raising up children abroad is especially uh, for those of us who come from, you know, we, we from from the culture where we come from, where we do things certain way. And um, I remember when I was young, and we have visitors at our house. Um, my mom communicates with everyone with eyes, you know, it just by, you know, um, uh, you know, looking at you, you know, and uh, you understand what she was talking about. You know, she will look at you in a particular way. And what that simply means is that can you go and make some, you know, get some refreshment for the visitor or can you get out from the living room, you know, and, and that's the way it is. Now you are communicating with your children um living abroad the same way they are just going to be looking at you and say what's that what are you saying and sometimes i'm even telling them don't you you know it's a, don't you know that that is wrong and the answer they will give is that what have i done because actually they, <laughs> they didn't know they've done anything wrong so this is what god was trying to tell jonah say look you might think that they're a terrible nation you might think that they are wicked people but actually they did not know that they were doing wrong. You know, I say this to people. Um, if you if you find someone who um, doesn't have a family relationship, especially, or let me give the example that I want to give, and, and, and I'm saying this without humility, not trying to spite anyone whatsoever. Um, if, if you have not raised up a child, maybe your own child, you have a child living with you, you know, that you have raised up, and you go, you've, you've you've been through that routine. If someone is walking with you and they're telling you about the trouble they have last night because of their, they have little baby. You know, you it's going to be difficult for you to understand why they haven't done what they're supposed to do at work because you haven't been through that particular experience before. But if you've been through that experience, you will know that you know what you are counting as sin against them may not necessarily be. Is sin. So that was what God was trying to say to uh, Jonah. And the other thing I want to say about what we read today was the fact that um, sometimes we really need, we really need to check our heart. What's more important to us uh, is Jonah's prophecy <laughs> of doom more important to him than people being saved. You know, sometimes we want jungle justice. We just want or to act right now to destroy the person right now we don't even want to give them a second chance so uh that's why god asked jonah said do you think it is right for you to be angry you know because 
he wasn't happy God saved the city, you know. Um, so we were told that he was very angry, you know. Uh, what we need to understand most time is that God is slow to anger and does not judge quickly because he wants all men saved. For adventure, this is just going to help some of us. I know some of us don't like people of religion, you know. I'm careful with my word. I don't want to say people of other religion because Christianity is not a religion. Uh, Christianity is an experience. So, uh, but people of religion, I put it that way because Christianity is not a religion. Um, you know, we, we wish, you know, that uh, something is just going to happen to them. No, God doesn't want something to happen to them. God has a plan for them. He wants them to be saved too. So, we think, you know, um, God's judgment is too slow. So um, sometimes we are angry because he's gracious to people we consider are not living right. And um, uh, we think uh, it's God's judgment, you know, that will make them repent. So when God punish them, you know, we say because, oh, they are fornicating, you know, when they catch faith. <laughs> A venerable disease, you know, something bad happened, terrible happens to them, and that will force them to repent. No, no. <laughs> God's judgment does not necessarily make some people to repent. It is the Lord's goodness. Romans 2 4 say it is the Lord, Lord's goodness that leads people to repentance. And God has been kind to you and uh, He has shown you mercy. So that's why we also need to be merciful to people. That reminds me of the story of the prodigal son because we can see Jonah in this condition. He was angry, said, "Lord, why, why will you save? Why will you accept them? You know, why will you have mercy on them?" I mean, we read right there that Jonah was waiting for the city to be destroyed, even after he himself thought that the people change. They change their way. I mean, he should rejoice. He should be thankful to God. You know, sometimes you know, especially in in marriage, you know, relationship. You see one of the partners, you know, have done something that is wrong and then they come back and apologize. And the other the other partner is saying, no, I'm not going to take you back. It's never going to happen. You hurt me so much. This, you know, all those kind of things, you know. Um, the, Jonah was in that situation too. And God told him, he said, look, um, you don't have any right to be angry because um, if I show, show you who you really are, <laughs> You won't be judging these people. So the story of the prodigal son, we were told in, in the book of Luke, we were told that the um, elder brother wasn't happy, you know, because the father decided to throw a welcome party for the junior brother. But the father told him something fundamental. He said, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this, thy brother was dead. And you see that he didn't say, he didn't just say he was lost. He was dead completely, but now he's living. And the, the senior brother was angry that I've been here all that long with you. He didn't even kill, you know, a cow for me. And uh, the father said they were all yours. You know, if you wanted it and you, you decide to take it, I wouldn't deny you of it. And that's exactly is our problem. There are certain things we think God will not give us. And so when we see unbeliever, when we see them prospering and they have some of those things, we become jealous. So we really need to address the condition of our heart. But because um, if, if you are able to ride it, if you are able to believe God for a jet, why don't you go for it? So why are you, why are you talking nonsense about people who've got private jets? You're not talking about unbelievers who, don't, uh, who have private jets. You're not talking about people Christian, who got nice, beautiful car. Uh, they are all yours. You can have it. So anyway, um, we were told that um, uh, the father told um, the elder brother and said, look, your brother is back. He's now alive. So let's receive him back. So it's important we welcome people back when they have repented. Um, the reason there is a high divorce rate among Christians is because we're not willing to forgive and forget. And it's important we do this. Uh, it's important that, especially between father and son, you know, I've come across, my heart goes out to young men, you know, in this nation, for example. Uh, the reason there is, you know, a breakdown in law and order is because we have so many young men without, you know, father figure, so to speak, in their life. 
because um you know their their father did something to them and they just like a kind of you know i'm not going to forgive you so if if you are watching this video you have a problem with your dad i want you to go and reunite with him i want you to forgive him i want you to let go i want to let the let the allow the holy spirit to minister to your heart and bring true reconciliation in your family in the mighty name of jesus i want you to know that uh, we are also debtors to god and if he wants to count our sins against us we will not be able to stand so in conclusion there is something i wanted to do um it was a plea from brother paul to philemon to accept onesiphorus back you know onesiphorus uh, was his servant but the servant did him great harm you know and then he ran away so um but paul now asked him say look you know when he ran away from you he came to me visited me in the prison and he has been a great comfort unto me so brother paul now wrote um apostle paul now wrote um uh, philemon and say i want you to receive him back you know what i found interesting in philemon uh verse 16 there's not just one chapter of that of that of that book was the fact that um paul didn't ask him to didn't ask um if, uh, didn't ask philemon to receive his slave to receive onesiphorus back as his slave he said he received him receive him as your brother can you can you see that receive your husband back as a child of god in other words receive him back as if he has not done anything receive him as if he has not committed adultery or fornication with another woman receive her back as if she has not done anything receive her back with a clean slate you know wow that's that's amazing you know um your your servant wronged you and ran away and here is a man of god telling you the same thing say can you take him back but when you are taking him back now you know so if your servant for example i i just imagine you know because uh, when i when i read the bible nowadays i like i like the holy spirit to give me the contest you know a contest beyond what um uh, contest beyond what was in the bible okay i can quick, quickly say this it was we were reading the story of um how jesus fed five thousand people and i think uh it was philip and andrew i, I hope i i got it right so jesus asked one of them he said you know um do we have bread at all and then one of them said oh yes there's a little boy here with five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish and the first thing that occurred to me was the fact that they were jesus didn't ask him okay the question the person jesus asked the question that where shall we find bread to buy to feed these people because they are hungry uh, he was sarcastic he said oh even if we buy bread worth of you know ten thousand pounds you know equivalent of the money as of today he will not be able to feed this five thousand and in those days they don't count women and children which are going to be double the size anyway that you know five thousand if you double that add another five thousand that's probably around fifteen twenty thousand he said look um we, we we can't find bread to buy and he will not feed them but um uh, I think it was Philip said uh, either Philip of Andrew or Andrew. He said to them. He said he said to Jesus. He said, "But there's a little lad." And the thing there for me was that you know I've been an usher in a in the church. You know, you know I'm the kind of a person that I walk around the whole church. I want to see everybody. I want to know what's going on. And the question for me was that how did he know that there was a little lad in a congregation of ten thousand that has five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish it must be that he's got a very good intelligence system telling him of what happened or that you know he really knows the people he cares for the people and he knows the people so i like to understand the context i like the holy spirit and then the holy spirit open up another thing that the boy the boy that had a lunch himself must have a good mother you know a good mother knowing that look my son is going out for a crusade with uh, uh, jesus 
and um, you know it might take a long time and then the mom packs some lunch for the boy and what about the boy who likes to share you know it's good for us to read the bible and just understand the context you know what i'm talking about so in this particular instance that we're talking about the Philemon and Onesiphorus, you know. So, Brother Paul was telling Philemon, say, receive him back, not as a slave, but as a brother. So, let's say that um, your direct report in the office, somebody who is reporting to you, you know, um, <laughs> maybe did something for you, and then he went away. And then Brother Paul now writing you and say, okay, I want you to take him back into the same job, the same job where you fired him. He said, Brother Paul now say, take him back into the same job. He said, but when you now take him back into the same job, don't, take, uh, sorry, take him back into your house. So maybe you're in the same fellowship, you're in the same church. Say, take him back to your church. But this time, around don't take him back to your church as your direct report take him back as a brother so what it simply means is that i'll tell you what it means so that means on a sunday when they want to be packing the chair uh maybe before um philemon will look to onesiphus and say look i'm your manager here you go and pack some of the chairs so brother paul is now saying all of you now pack chairs together because you're all washed in the blood of jesus christ isn't that serious isn't that amazing so um don't receive your spouse back with some level of looking at say with pity do you understand what i'm saying uh, what can you do without me if i choose not to take you back you are done I'm I'm just I'm just I just have pity on you. That's why I've decided to take you back. No, take them back as a child of God. So um I want you to know that the separation between the both of you is so you can come together permanently. But this time you will both come together stronger and full of joy in Jesus' name. Um he or she may not have been useful, but this time around, as they come back to you, they will bring you much joy in the mighty name of jesus accept them as a child of god uh fulfill my joy i'm 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 speaking to you like brother paul now fulfill my joy in christ and let go of the past knowing that god has been merciful unto you if you accept me as your friend you know maybe you've been watching this video you love it so much you accept me as your friend and a servant of god let there be a reunion may the lord restore what you have lost in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen let's pray for those who are sick father in the name of jesus i thank you for this spirit of forgiveness in the house in that living room in that hospital environment lord thank you as bitterness is being removed in jesus name thank you for deep seated joy joy unspeakable thank you because that joy is flowing in heart right now and is bringing healing thank you for your peace at the same time you know peace that passes all understanding in every heart that is watching right now peace in their job peace in their family in their home um peace even in the body in the mighty name of jesus lord i give you praise devil i bind you i command you to take your hand of these people right now they are set free from your bondage in the mighty name of jesus they are set free from your bondage in the mighty name of jesus lord i give you praise and i thank you in jesus name we are prayed i believe god that the power of god is upon you and the lord has made you whole so i want you to thank god i want you to rejoice thank him for what he has done for you and um you know just go and thank him i want to give someone the opportunity to say yes to jesus um jesus christ came so that you may have eternal life brother and sister watching me let me tell you something if you have not experienced supernatural you have not lived i'm telling you the truth um don't let anybody deceive you jesus christ came so that you may be a partaker of the divine nature of god don't let people keep deceiving deceiving you that they're the only one who got the exclusive right to god so you go to them all the time to talk to god on your behalf when 
our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. We were told that we were told, you know, we read, you know, and we were told that, you know, the access to the throne of grace, the veil, the curtain, the, the, the limitation, the boundary was removed so that everyone can come with boldness, without guilt, shame, or inferiority complex. So I want you to accept Jesus Christ and come and participate in the divine nature. Come and participate in the supernatural life. Come and experience God. Um, there, there's something about the supernatural life that, you know, even when bad things happen to you, it will not affect you the way it will affect other people. It won't bring you down the way it will bring down other people. And even if you go down, you will rise up again. Because the word of the Lord says, even though the righteous man shall fall down seven times, it will rise up again because of the power of God that is at work in his life. So I want to encourage you to accept Jesus Christ. Let him give him give you life when it comes into your life you receive life you receive abundant life that's the promise when jesus comes into your life you have hope you know you 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 have that joy you know most of the problem in life is the fact that people just need someone to share the burden with someone to talk to but you know there's someone that knows everything about your life him just speaking some words into your life will make your day that person is jesus christ and his spirit the holy spirit will come and dwell on the inside of you so if you are ready today to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior you know i want you to please say this prayer after me and i want you to say with all your heart say look i'm tired of the life that i'm living i need that jesus i want to have eternal life i want to participate in the divine nature of God. So I want you to say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for saying that prayer. You're going to see our email address at the bottom of the screen. I want you to send us an email. And the reason is because we want to send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually. You can also text us or you can also call, uh, call us. Uh, we want you to be part of you know daily messages we send out to people on text message just to encourage you. If we are on WhatsApp group, uh, we like to include you. You know, we do send out some uh, words, you know, you know, that will uplift you, that will inspire faith in you, and we want you to take advantage of that. Uh, finally, I want you to find a local church around you you can be part of. Um, if you want to be part of our fellowship, you feel God is leading you to be part of us, you are more than welcome. We meet at Luton on Sunday, which is a communion service, and then we do series of online activities. We do this mirror of the world every day. And then 10 p.m. UK time, we do uh, we have prayer meeting on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. If you are watching this video on a Monday, <laughs> um, and then we just pray for 30 minutes, which is 9 to 9 30. And then on Friday, we have Bible study, which is from 9 to 10 p.m. maximum 10 15. So, and then we continue with our mirror of the world, and we go out for evangelism every saturday at Luton town center so if you need someone to encourage you to go and evangelize i mean we are not just doing it because we want people in our church we're doing it because jesus gave the command commandment that we should go out and preach to all nations may god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he will do it i want to thank you very much for watching um if you have any question whatsoever and uh, you need answers to those questions um i want you to get in touch with us and by the grace of god the lord will help us to be able to provide answers to you 
or if you need any kind of support, spiritual support, financial support, whatever kind of support, just get in touch with that. You do, don't have to be, you don't have to be a member of the fellowship for us to be able to do that for you. I want to say thank you very much for watching this video today. If it has been a blessing to you, please share it with someone and don't forget, go on our YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel so that you know you will get an alert when we upload new video uh until i come your way same time tomorrow my name is buki adioshun again thank you for watching and god bless you bye